We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and prepared for this by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the Gospel, and to grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. So we pray together. Holy, holy God, God, holy, holy and, and strong, holy, holy and, and immortal, immortal, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Let us pray for grace to keep Lent faithfully. Holy God, our lives are laid open before you. Rescue us from the chaos of sin, and through the death of your Son, bring us healing and make us whole. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We hear our readings. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For the Lord says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labours, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honour and dishonour, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord is a great God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning he came again to the temple. All the people came to him and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery. And making her stand before all of them, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on do not sin again. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is Ash Wednesday, and a recurring word in the service is sin. What is sin? How would you describe what sin is? Does the word sin bring back memories of lists of shalts and shalt nots with an underlying message that you can never be good enough? Does it have a sense of killjoy, do-goody, standoffishness? Have you seen it used in a way to make people feel bad about themselves? A way to scare them to behave in a particular way? For me, those are all truly unhelpful ways of understanding sin. For me, the word sin is about acknowledging my separation from the God of love and from love of my neighbour and love of myself. And more than any, one word that sums up this for me in this past year of lockdowns and social distancing is the word isolation. Isolation has been described as the chief human problem of our age, even before the pandemic. And certainly the pandemic has shone a spotlight on this problem. Isolation impedes our mental and physical well-being because as humans we are social creatures created to be in communion with God, our neighbours and ourselves. When we're isolated or isolate ourselves, our humanity is diminished. The quickest way to drive somebody insane is to put them in solitary confinement. Isolation is the opposite of community. We were created in the triune image of God, which is a loving community of Father, Son and Holy Spirit that can be understood as being so caught up in giving that they share one nature. 
As we look at our readings today, we can substitute the word isolation for sin. From the Corinthians reading, sin as isolation sounds like this. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be isolated, who knew no isolation, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. By Jesus taking on our isolation, we can be reconciled to God, ourselves and our neighbours. And how did this come about? The Christian message is that God is the one who has made reconciliation possible. God is the one who has dealt with the disease of isolation for us. As we look back to the celebration of Christmas, this happened when God became one of us. Emmanuel, God with us. And looking forward towards Good Friday, the cross is Jesus' ultimate demonstration of being with us, taking on himself our isolation. Remember Jesus' agonising words on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus experiences the reality of human sin because sin is fundamentally isolation from God. Jesus experiences the horror of death because death is the word we give to being without all things, without breath without connectedness, without consciousness, without a body. To be able to reconcile us to the Father, Jesus had at the cross lost his own being with the Father. And the Father longed so much to be with us that at this moment lost his being with the Son, which is the essence of his being. Here is the astonishing good news. Because God chose through Jesus to be with us, we can be with him. We can turn away from our isolation and turn to God. We can be reconciled. And how do we celebrate this good news with others? by listening to people in their isolation and distress, even when there's nothing we can do for them. By being with people in grief and sadness and loss, even when there is nothing to say. By being still with God in silence, even when we can't think how to pray. This year's experience of feeling physically isolated from my friends, family and church community during lockdowns has given me a little glimpse of the isolation that Jesus must have felt as he journeyed towards and experienced the cross. This Lent, I'm not planning on giving up anything. Instead, I will be concentrating on seeking greater connection with others and with God. May you have a holy Lent. Amen. We come now to a time of penitence. In a time of quiet reflection, as we listen to a piece of music, let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God.
we pray together. We have have not loved you with our whole heart. We We have have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. At this moment, you would normally be invited to come and receive the sign of the cross in ashes. But as we're unable to be together in church, I invite you to make the sign of the cross on your forehead. We do so as a sign of the spirit of repentance with which we shall keep this season of Lent. We pray together. God, God, our Father, Father, help help us to remember that that you created us from the dust dust of the the earth, and and to dust we shall return. Help Help us us to turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ, for it is by your grace alone that we receive eternal life in Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Amen. The Lord enrich us with his grace and nourish us with his blessing. The Lord defend us in trouble and keep us from all evil. The Lord accept our prayers and absolve us from all our offences for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. We share the peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God of our journey, as we walk with you on your path of obedience, sustain us on our way and lead us to your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these 40 days, you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our, our Father, Father who art in, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace.
Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your church with your perpetual mercy, and because without you our human frailty cannot but fall, keep us ever by your help from all things hurtful, and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The final blessing. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>